Elizabeth Certificate of Variance issued on or about, issued on March 27th, 1990, as recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, Book 9137, page, oh, we've lost the page here. <laughs> Well, let's 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 forget the reference to the registry of deeds. I think I think it suffices to to say that it complies uh, complies with the March twenty seventh, nineteen ninety certificate of variance issued by the the town of Cape Elizabeth. That sound sound all right? Yes, by me. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions about? Oh, go for it, Kevin. Can you just reread that again, real quickly? <laughs> okay. <Sorry. laughs> Sure. Uh, the application um, conforms and complies with the March 27th, 1990 Certificate of Variance approved by the Cape Elizabeth Board of Zoning Appeals. Are we making that a finding of fact? Are we? Are... we I'm flex. I'm flexible on that one. Um, I, I I don't think it hurts anything. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I don't. I don't feel strongly either way. No. No. Me. Me neither. All right. Hearing uh, no further comments, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the uh, proposed findings of fact and proposed additional findings of fact um, as as amended uh, per the per the uh, the conversation for the per the uh, consideration of the board. So moved. Michael moves it. Do we have a second? Matthew, seconds. Any con? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, raise your hand, please. Show a unanimous approval. Mr. Darling, thank you for the application. Thanks for bearing with us this evening and good luck with your project. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of your time. Stay safe. Very, very good. All right, we are, are on to our second application of the evening, uh, and that's to hear the request of uh, Kevin Brown Architecture, representing Marissa and Keith Tobias, owners of the property at 16 Smugglers Cove Road, map U10 lot 41, to replace and enlarge a non-conforming single family dwelling on their property based on section 19-4-3.B.2, B.3, and B.4, of the zoning ordinance. Um, ben, if you could offer us a quick intro on this. Sure. Uh, Mr. Brown came to me, his, uh, his client purchased the property a few years ago. It's, uh, it's a small older Cape and they wanna reconstruct and expand the house. And it's uh, a very tight lot as far as the RA zone is considered. And so with side set, side and front setbacks of 25 feet, it, uh, it, it's having trouble meeting those. Are you guys hearing me okay? My, yes. my computer's acting up. Okay. So that's, that's about it. Okay, very good. And, and I don't know who is uh, representing Kevin Brown Architecture this evening, but uh, we'll turn Turn the floor over to uh, to the applicant to uh, to run through the application for us. Okay, it is uh, Kevin Brown, and is, I just promoted him to a panelist. It is the Kevin Brown? Very good. Hello, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, Kevin Brown, Kevin Brown Architecture, here representing Keith and Marissa Tobias for 16 Smugglers Cove, as Ben stated, um, and we are proposing to to tear down and, re and rebuild an ex a new home on the existing footprint, essentially. Um, trying to minimize, it really, it's, it's pretty much almost, it's a little, it squares off the existing house that was there in terms of footprint. Um, it's a little bit larger footprint wise, but overall, 
we were trying to keep it on the existing spot that it is currently. And there's a number of reasons that, you know, we're proposing to do that. Um, you know, we, we could utilize the existing driveway. We can utilize uh, the existing excavated hole of the current foundation, which is currently a one story house with essentially a daylight basement, but a very marginal daylight basement. So really what we're proposing to do is do, doing um, two stories above grade versus one and still having a basement walkout because the slight, the slope, the uh, slope of the land does dramatically change from the street down to the backyard. Um, as you can see in the packet, the, the building envelope is long and rectangular. Um, we, could, we could have certainly built a house in that building envelope, but it wouldn't have been pleasing to one or more than of the neighbors in terms of the view that it would impact. Um, that is something we, we've taken into consideration with the design that we've come up with. Um, we've tried to delineate that a little bit on the, on the, the documents. Um, there's, I think it's the last sheet in your document packet. You can kind of see the, you know, we did some overlays in terms of where the new structure will, how it will cover the existing structure. And it gives you a sense of how much taller the new structure will be from the old structure and kind of We've taken some, we've worked, talked with um, the three neighbors that would be impacted by the view. Um, and at first we proposed, you know, a little larger height wise house on the existing footprint, which is the red line. I just wanted to show you the process that we went through. And then the current design, which is, you can kind of see the difference between that red line and the, the sort of ghosted structure on that, those, that picture diagram. Uh, it kind of gives you the sense of, you know, we did lower that by, I think it was about two feet lower. So we are well below the maximum height that we're allowed of 35 feet. We're at, um, we're about four feet under that. Um, and again, we were trying to balance all the different neighbors in terms of the views that we could impact. And so we did a study from, from uh, you know, images that were provided by those neighbors from either angle. Again, it's a one story, 1940s uh, house that hasn't been updated really at all. Um, and we're just trying to, to build it to modern living and a little bit taller, you know, in keeping not much, you know, it's in keeping with the, the heights of the house, the neighboring houses. So um, I think that overall covers, you know, the summary, the rest is kind of laid out in the packet in more detail, but I'd be happy to answer any questions as you guys look through the proposal. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Um, and the other Kevin, board uh, member Kevin. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, Mr. Brown, how many uh, bedrooms and bathrooms are in the house now? I know it says that there are three beds, um, and you're proposing three beds, but Correct. then also two, you know, call it bunk rooms. Is that are those bunk rooms extant in the structure today? Yeah, the, the basement essentially is, I believe, two bedrooms as it exists today. And then there's, so I I'm pretty certain it's, it's, we're not making any more bedrooms. We're just making, you know, there's going to be some more uh, living areas, per se, you know, a sitting room on each level. And do you know how many bathrooms there are in total in the house right now? Uh, two. I believe. I'm trying to remember the basement's very marginal and very out of date. And I'm trying to remember it's, it's kind of been cobbled together. So 200, and maybe this is partly for, for Ben too, 270 gallons a day is kind of a two and a half bedroom system, right? No, that's a three bedroom system. That, that is a three, a three bedroom. bedroom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's that's really what I had for now. I will probably have more as we go okay. along here. Thank you. Aaron, did I see your hand up? Yeah, I had I, I, I squinted and was able to read this better. Good. <laughs> that's my eyes, not not Kevin's work. That's my eyes. Matthew. And then Michael. Uh, two questions for the applicant. Um, 
Well, Mr. Brown, okay. um, on the first um, large sheet of the application, mm -hmm. the, uh, there's a um, an overlay, dark gray, and it looks like light blue or light green. Um, there's um, on the dotted lines inside the blue areas. There's the dotted line around the perimeter of the building, what I perceive as the building envelope. And then yes. yep. uh, there's an interior um, long dash and then two short dashes that, sure. uh, what does that represent? So, so basically the 25 foot setback is, is dimension to the, the inner dash line. And what we were trying to show with the outer one is, you know, not getting, not making the house any more non-conforming than the existing house was. So that, that's what kind of what that line represents. We kind of took a parallel line to the property line and, and extrapolated it, you know, to the closest point that the existing house was. Um, and this may be a question for Ben. Um, we can raise this with you, Mr. Brown, but uh, just a query for Ben when he uh, thinks about it. Oh, here's the answer from Mr. Brown. On the septic tank, uh, the relocation, and uh, the, apparently there's a, a portion of it that will be in the setback. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the setback is uh, 10 feet for the septic tank to the property line. And it can, so there's, there's plenty of room there. It can also, it's possible to receive a variance down to five feet to the property line. Thank you. So plenty, plenty of room from that perspective. I think Michael was next. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Kevin. Um, really, really good um, figures and graphics. Makes it really easy to explain, or really easy to understand. Um, one question I had, you know, I, I, I don't think I'd ever read the definition of building height in the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Mm -hmm. It, it's that's the craziest definition that that I've I've seen. And I read a lot of ordinances, but um, I just want to I just and I don't want you to go into it because it it would confuse everyone and probably put us all to sleep. But I just want to confirm that the line you have shown on your elevation views, that thirty five foot maximum building height, yes, was calculated from using the the ordinance definition. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Good enough. Thank you. Aaron, I think I saw your hand up. Yep. Yeah, so um, the, the sheet with the surrounding view corridors on it, uh, with the 3D view overlays. Yep. So is it, is it your um, position that basically the red outline is what is permissible without having to get, having to visit us? No, actually, no, we didn't. No, what that was kind of showing was the, the sort of the process that, you know, we, we, we met with the neighbors initially, or one or two of them with that sort of diagram. Mm -hmm. And that we got some feedback and we ended up shifting some things around shrinking, twisting the, the footprint to, to try to minimize the impact. So okay. that's kind of showing where we started and where we ended. Okay. Matthew. I had my hand up, but I think this is a, a question for Ben to go to the executive uh, session. It has to do with the, the building um, building permit, but um, I'll wait for my, my time. And, and Joe, you're, you're way up on the right-hand side of my right. screen. Are you <laughs> trying to get into the, into the game right. here? I gotta be more aggressive. Um, please, please have at it. Yeah, I was just curious as to whether the, um, the, the neighbors ultimately signed off on, on the project. Are we going to find out about that in the public hearing portion? I, I think we'll. I think we're going to find out about that. Uh, there's a there's a number of them here as attendees, and uh, I've had uh, several discussions with several of them, and they they didn't submit uh, anything official to me on paper, but they're they're here to talk about it and state where they stand. Just, I'm just curious. Uh, to what, 
how much does uh, the new pro the new house um, exceed the existing square footage of the old house? Not the footprint, but the actual living yeah. area. Um, I think it's around four. I, mean, this, I don't have it in, in front of me, but I'm guessing probably like four or five hundred square feet. It's essentially another floor. Could be a, more, a little bit more than it actually, because the footprint is is about. Um, I think the footprint of the house is about twelve hundred. So it's it's probably closer in the um, eight hundred because the deck is yeah. A quick assumption is probably around six to seven to eight hundred somewhere in that range. Any additional questions for the uh, applicant at this point? All right, uh, hearing none, thank you, Kevin. Welcome. We, we, we may have additional questions for you uh, going forward, but let's move on to um, uh, public comment. Ben, I, I, th I think you remarked that you hadn't received anything, any written submissions on this, is that right? That's right. Okay. okay. Well, let's then go ahead and uh, open uh, open up the floor to uh, members of the public and, and it sounds like there's some neighbors who, who want to comment on this and, and Ben, I'll, I'll leave it to you to to admit them uh, in due process. Yeah, and, and I'll just, I don't see any of their hands up at the moment, but you know, several of them came forward and are concerned uh, about their views and, uh, and had discussions with me about the process and where, where, what role they were able to play in the process. It is, the house is in a, a tight, -lit, tight knit little neighborhood, but there, there are several houses that, uh, that have a view shed through there. So it is, uh, it's, a, it's a tight situation. And we do have a hand up now, uh, Mark Coggin. Uh, he is now allowed to talk. Mark, if you could just state your name and address, that'd be great. Sure, thanks, Ben. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, everyone. This is Mark Coggin, uh, my wife, Jana, as well. We live at Nine Smugglers Cove Road. So first, uh, first, I want to thank um, the board for the service to the town that you serve here, and also Ben for kind of walking us through the process as we've had. We were uh, among the the members of the neighborhood who did have a conversation with him prior. So, just quickly, we moved to Cape in August of 2019, and we just completed last month uh, a significant addition. Uh, to the home that took about seven months. And, and I think you, you all saw the proposal uh, come before you about a year ago and then just through final inspection last month. The, uh, the project was a replacement of a garage of about a 60 year old garage. And then we put a living space above that garage. And one of the primary objectives of that addition was to capture the views looking kind of down the street. In fact, over the roof, of the Tobias property into you know, basically into Casco Bay and to, toward the islands. And um, when we went through the process, we were of course very sensitive to the neighbors and any views. And in fact, it really did not impact any views when we did the project. But as we, as we come now to the proposal that um, Kevin's brought forward on behalf of Marissa and Keith, the, um, the proposal does significantly impact our view that we just uh, worked so hard to achieve. I think in your packet, because Marissa has shared with us some of the drawings, and I think in your packet, you may see one of the rendered drawings um, of, it, in fact, a photo from our new room looking down the street with uh, some of those shading and overlays put, put over it. And certainly we respect their desire to rebuild the home and, and you know, create a better living space for themselves. But it is unfortunate that the proposal will reduce our view by about 60%. And as, as Kevin mentioned, they did take into account some early feedback we provided. The new design that's being proposed does, re does lower the, uh, the ridge by about two and a half feet from the originally proposed design. 
but it's still six feet above the existing structure. And unfortunately, any increase in ridge height more than two and a half or three feet will completely, will, or 60% obstruct the view that we now enjoy. So I just sharing that feedback and we do appreciate you all taking our input uh, as you consider this proposed project. Thank you. And Mark, Mark, if you could r remind me what, what, what the address is of your home. I'm sorry, I missed that. Sorry, it's, it's nine Smugglers Cove Road, Michael. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm not seeing any hands up at the moment. Is there, is there anyone else out there that would like to make a comment? Got a hand up now. I will uh, recognize the Haltos in a moment. Okay, go ahead, Mr. and Mrs. Haltoff. You're on mute at the moment. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, can you hear me now, Ben? This is Mark Haltoff? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, Ben. Uh, we also have been involved in the whole process and I'd like to thank you all for you know, letting us say our piece. Um, we also appreciate the fact that, you know, everybody wants to build their perfect, perfect home and they have stayed on the footprint, which we appreciate very much from my point of view. I'm at 14 Smugglers Cove. We are directly uh, uh, to the west of them, so their their property is between us and the and the ocean. Um, the only place we're impacted with the the new design is the porch, which they're proposing on adding to the house. Uh, which we understand, you know, why they would want to do that. It's it, it adds a nice aspect to their house and the only thing that we might request is that rather than doing a screened in porch they do just an open porch or if they're going to screen it in move the screen end to the uh, I guess it would be east or west I should say of their you know of the of the plan um, Other than that, uh, you know, I, I I appreciate the fact that it, from our viewpoint, the the height doesn't affect us as much as it does Mark and Jana, but you know that screened-in porch cuts our view by about twenty percent. And if it weren't screened, it, you know, it would just be less obtrusive. And that's about it. I, uh, I, I don't see anybody else at the moment with their hands up. Is there anyone, anyone else out there that would like to make a comment? Okay, we've got uh, Marissa Tobias has her hand up and I've allowed her to talk. Hi, um, this is Marisa Tobias. Um, Keith is here also. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, we just wanted to um, say that we, we purchased the home in March of 2018 um, and we've been taking our time um, trying to figure out 
what to do with it. Um, but always we wanted to make sure that we, we stayed with, with the tone of the um, neighborhood and the, the size and this type of house that it is. Um, we just got to the point where because it's an old house that nothing has ever been done to it before, we realized the um, best thing to do was to take it down and do a new construction. Um, and, and keeping in mind, you know, how it impacts our neighbors. Um, but we, you know, we think that it's still a pretty modest home um, and, you know, within the guidelines of what we, we can do, um, it's less, you know, it's not as high as we could and we tried to stay in the footprint. So um, we hope that you, you know, consider it um, and, and that, you know, we can move forward. Okay, there are currently no hands up. There are eight attendees there. I believe uh, four, four of them have talked. Okay, well, well thank you, Marisa, for commenting, um, for uh, offering your thoughts, and thank you uh, as well to the, the other neighbors for offering uh, your thoughts and comments on the, on the application. Um, as we'll give it uh, one more shot, if there's anybody else who wants to offer um, any commentary on the proposed application, uh, please, please raise your hand now. Nothing showing, Ben? Nothing showing. Okay, we'll go ahead, go ahead then and, and close uh, the meeting to public comment uh, and we'll move on to board uh, consideration and discussion of the application. Thoughts? Joe. Karen. Uh, I guess this is a question for uh, the applicant or the applicant's representative. Uh, what consideration was given to um, uh, confining the new structure to within the, to the uh, highest elevation of the previous house? In other words, not to exceed the previous height of the other house. We did explore that initially, but because because everything is kind of pushing upwards because the existing basement wasn't really to code. So that entail pushes the first floor up, which pushes up you know, the roof, even if we didn't raise it. So we're starting there, but then we're trying to add a second floor. And to do that without doing a roof that was almost flat um, and aesthetically not pleasing for that neighborhood, that's kind of where we landed with the design that we have. So it would it'd be possible to do a one story house, but just not very, it's just not really desirable from the standpoint um, of- The goal was, to, the goal was to add more square footage with the house. And we, rather than going, you know, we're, we're between a rock and a hard place here because we've got, three different angles of people looking by the house. So the goal was to, we thought to minimize it, we would go upwards with the extra square footage that we needed, adding a second floor on top of the one story from the street side. You know, yes, we could have added horizontally in the building envelope, but then we would have blocked the, a, the, the most adjacent neighbor's view pretty much completely. So, you know, so we were trying to balance the three different angles, I guess, is kind of what we were trying to do. And we thought this would be the least of in, the most impact. Matthew. Uh, Mr. Brown, I, I had a query. So if, if the house is gonna be replaced. Mm -hmm. I'm looking on the, the, the large map that has the colored shading. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is now. The site plan? Yes. 
And in theory, you can move the house back another 25, 40 feet into the lot. Correct. But we would block, you know, we're, we're impacting. That's, a, that's yeah. a secondary point. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, and you can make it, I think it's 35 feet. It's the height. Right. right. Completely modern. And, and, and I think there's some permeability issues, but you couldn't use the entire building envelope, I don't think. Um, right. What is the view? If you move the house to the back of the lot, what is the view looking east? Looking east? It, it is much better for, for this client, for, for the, my clients. But the neighboring client would no longer have a view. One step at a time. I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so they have almost a direct view of the ocean. You would, yeah. Yeah. Because the view opens up as you go towards the back. But and if your client chose to do that, uh, there are lots in front of his or her house that's going to be subject to the same problems of someone getting in front of them. Okay, thank you. Yep. I still have a question for Ben during our executive session. Uh, I think I think we are technically into our into our session here. Uh, then, we've kind then, of led over into some additional questions for Kevin, but you should feel feel free to proceed. It's a two part question. The first to Ben, second part to Mike. Uh, we'll go with Mike first. Where in the ordinance did you see the the height definition? Is that in the beginning? Uh, under height building, and I I had thought it was thirty five feet uh, in that section. But I I'm on page fourteen of my. Uh, well, that's, of the that's where you. That's the definition of how you measure building height, and <clears throat> and so in theory, different zones could have different height limits. But the, the definition of building height just tells you how to, how to actually calculate it. And you would think it would be a pretty simple process, but with a, with a, a lot sloping as much as this one does, it, 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 actually, it becomes a, a bit of a process. So thank you. Uh, because I remember there was an application years ago in Shore Acres where there was a lot going to the water. It was down off from the road and there was a tricky issue. Where do you measure the 35 feet? So I think we've, you know, I'm sure Ben has done the process before, and, and I know that my recollection is that we went through it way years ago. Um, and so hence the query to Ben is that where is where's the um, the comment that it's 35 feet? And, and, and when you look at the building, building permit, is that one of the restrictions or considerations that you have to make sure that the house is that height is already determined to get the building permit? Yes, the, the height of the structure is a consideration of the building permit and I confirm that any building permit I approve, the, the height will be less than 35 feet. Okay, thank you both. And uh, oftentimes, you know, it depends how much they're pushing the envelope to how deep I dive into this definition. You know, some, sometimes uh, a surveyor goes and gets grades every once every foot to do an average grade and and it can come down to the inch, but in but in most cases, uh, you know, people are three or four feet away, and we don't we don't need to get a surveyor involved. I just want to add that when when we're you know it, th this thirty five foot maximum height is being thrown around, but that that assumes that we have a conforming structure. So if this was built within the setbacks, uh, then it would be limited to 35 feet. But what they're here before us um, to request to expand sort of, sort of outside the, the allowable building envelope. Um, and we're, we're in order to, to, for us to allow them to do that, we're to consider views of adjacent property owners. And I'll, I'll just pipe up here while, while, I'm, while I'm speaking on, on my thoughts on this. I, I, I'm struggling with this. I, I really respect the process that they went through. Um, I agree with the analysis Kevin went through. I agree that it's better to put the building where they're showing it for multiple reasons. 
Um, it just makes complete sense. Um, but I, I do have a hard time um, with the, 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 what this is going to do to that view from, from uh, Mr. Mr. Coggin, the Nine Smugglers Cove. Um, and and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm still a little up in the air on it and I'd like to hear others' opinions on it. Um, and, I, and I understand your line of thinking now, I think it's spot on. It, if, and, and Mr. Kevin Brown had pointed this out as well. If they build it within, they, if they build it conforming to the setbacks, they, they completely eliminate the view from next door, from 14 Smugglers Cove. So, you know, it, it's a very difficult situation here. Um, and and I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure where I'm coming down on it, but uh, so I'm interested to hear, hear the rest of the board's um, take on, on particularly the view uh, from nine Smugglers Cove, because I think that's, you know, at least in my opinion, that's what this application comes down to. I think all the other um, criteria, uh, I think they've done an excellent job at, and I think they've done a really nice job trying to balance, um, you know, the, the views from these different angles. Uh, it's just, it's just a tough, tough, tough site. So thanks. Kevin. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I find myself in the position of, of basically agreeing with everything Mike just said. Um, I just want to say, you know, to, to Kevin Brown, thank you for putting this package together. This is, you know, you've had some experience before this board before and really appreciate all of the effort because it's, it's makes it very clear what we're looking at here. Um, I too struggle with the, the view corridor, uh, issue here. Um, you know, I, I, I do understand we're not increasing the number of bedrooms we are increasing, you know, it seems like the number of bathrooms and certainly the size of the property and, and it being on septic. Um, you know, I, I, I have some concerns around that as well. Uh, but the view corridors to me are a little bit concerning. I, I think I would ideally like to see a little more, um, you know, a little more work on the design to get more buy-in from the neighbors if that's possible. And if it's not possible, um, if we're at the stage where, where that has already occurred and, you know, we are where we are, then, you know, I think we, we do need to decision it based on that. Um, I, you know, the, the, there's part of me hoping, um, you know, that, that we see this again in 30 days or 60 days and, and hear a little bit more uh, you know, development of this design, maybe incorporating some of the comments that have been expressed uh, tonight. And, and maybe that does result in a second look that says, hey, maybe we put the, the home, you know, in the setbacks, which would re result in moving the septic field. And that, you know, that's a larger job, um, you know, as well, that this is a there's, a, there's a permanence associated to this decision that I, I don't feel totally comfortable um, giving a yay vote to right now. Go. Um, yeah, I, I guess I haven't formulated exactly what I'd like to say, but I, I, I I agree with um, with uh, with what um, um, Michael and Kevin just said. I mean, just in terms of the, the quandary, I, f I find myself in. I know that the you can see that the applicants do have their hearts set on um, this larger house. They've done a great job in you know putting together this application, and yet it does impair the view. It would impair the view of the of the neighbor in a, in a, in a significant way. And our duty is to make sure that um, we take into account uh, that, you know, that it does not, um, uh, looking for the exact words, but we're trying to avoid, to make sure that this to the greatest extent practical, um, that, uh, that views are not impacted among other criteria. And I guess I'm not convinced um, that there are other alternatives. I mean, I, it seems like uh, the most, you know, dra draconian alternatives to go back to a one-story house. But I'd like to think that there are other ways of, of coming up with an inventive solution that gives more to what the applicants want, but um, does not impair the, 
the view of the um, of the neighbors. I I'll just point out, and I'm I'm struggling with this one as well. Um, this is a, a tough call, but I will point out that that B two of the relevant ordinance is is not a strict application rule as far as whether it's not a if if the view is impacted, therefore the applicant uh, the application cannot be approved. The specific language is is only that the zoning board of appeals consider the impact on views. So I just want to I just want to uh, ensure that we're all you know, operating off the off the plain uh, language of the ordinance in that regard. Um, again, I'm, I'm kind of waffling on this one myself, so I'm not I'm not uh, trying to discount the importance of of the neighbor's views, but that is the the language of the ordinance. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just to just to clarify, I I agree. It's not just impact on views is not sufficient, but we're we are trying to determine right whether um, this project meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. So that's where I'm, I'm, that's where I'm struggling with. Are there, is this the, the best you can do? Is this the greatest practical extent or is there something better that you can do um, with regards to protecting views? And I, I just haven't, I guess I'm not convinced that using that specific criteria that the, we've, the applicant has met it at this point. Well, I think the greatest practical extent language applies to the setbacks and 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 not to the views now. I, I believe, and I'll, I'll look back at that myself. Uh, uh, but I, but I think that's where that uh, greatest practical extent language kicks in. Here, I have a question. Yes. So. The turning of the structure, is it a relocation? That's an open question for any other board members. Uh, I don't I think it's, I, I don't think it's turning. Matters, whether it's relocation or, or re replacement. Um, I, I, I mean, Matt, where are you going with with the question, I guess. Well, I'm trying to, the, the, we had a, a, an application a few years ago down near the lobster shack and there was a row of houses almost like this where the house in the middle or the, the, the house furthest away from the water spent all their money you know, developing their property and they had a great view of the water. And the applicant came and uh, applied and they wanted to put in a garage, the second bedroom and some other things. And essentially, uh, it would block the the um, the views of the the house furthest away, and this is like the leapfrogging problem. And I I really I get it. I'm I am sympathetic, and and this comes down to you know neighborhood politics and and whether homeowner or landowners wishes to maximize their property and to do what they wish within the law and within the confines of the ordinance. And so I'm I'm struggling. Um, as to the appropriate outcome here. And so I, you know, a view is a view and some, you know, it's people to have it in different, um, hold it in different regards. And, and so when I looked at that section that we're talking about on page 46, there's a long sentence, it's actually one sentence paragraph. And then the, the first introduction, unless you can point me to a different section that says views should be considered. They're talking about a relocation and so I, I posited to the board, you know, what are we talking about? If you're turning the um, structure on, on the foundation, I don't think it's moving, it's just going up in height, and not a little bit. Well, Very whether that captures the question of whether it's a location. If it's a, I think if it's a location, then you can, then you take Joe's point, then maybe you should be taking views, that, that, uh, the impact on views. But, and then, Three and four incorporate two, right? That, that, that's correct. And, and I was just looking back at the language. And I think Joe is right, which is the, the greatest practical, the view is, is a piece of the consideration of the greatest practical extent of the, of the, uh, of the setbacks. And, but Kevin, yes, you make a good point. I mean, regardless of whether we're talking 
relocation or reconstruction or replacement, it all uh, both turned back to obviously the, the, the former relocation is B2, the latter uh, specifically references the requirements uh, in B2 relocation. So the view is, is certainly a piece of the puzzle here. I have a different interpretation on that uh, provisions. Uh, I think it's quite specific on relocation, but I take your point. So on the issue of, uh, of the views then, can there be no change to the structure of the house? And, and then at which point can you say that it's too far? I, I don't, I think there can be a change. I, I think the, the requirement is simply that we consider um, the impact on views in our analysis and whether, um, again, it, 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 that is uh, to the greatest practical extent consistent with, with any changes to the setback or the existing uh, setback of the, of the uh, building. And I think that's to, to, to board member Kevin's point, which is, is, you know, maybe there needs to be a little bit more twisting of the dials to ensure that this is to the greatest practical extent, um, con consistent to the greatest practical extent. That being, that being said, um, you know, procedurally speaking, I, I don't think we, maybe this has happened in the past. I, I don't recollect it happening, but uh, my memory isn't always that good with, with these things. It's a kind of in one ear and out the other sometimes, but I, I don't know procedurally whether we, uh, if, if the board were so inclined, whether we would send um, Mr. Brown and the, and the applicants back to uh, the drawing board for some kind of amended application. I don't think that usually happens. I think we usually vote it, vote it up or down. And, and then if they submit a new application later, um, then, then that's fine. But um, Ben, what are your thoughts on that? Again, my recollection isn't great there. Uh, I, I think typically, I, I think if the board is in heading in the direction that you seem to be heading, uh, you could ask the applicant if, uh, if they wanna withdraw the application and resubmit it at the next meeting and or if they want an up or down vote this evening, I, I think that's one way to go is to ask the applicant if they want to withdraw or, or get their up or down vote tonight. Kevin. Somebody can remind me here, is this one where if, if there is a vote, they can't come back within a year? Because I just want to make sure we're not, there's no bumping up against that. Yeah, I, I believe that's I believe that's the case. You're you can't you can't come back with the same application for a year if uh, if you're denied. I, I recall like the, the, what that new application is defined. Uh, the I redesign guess, in a new application, it's a different application. Yeah, yeah, you could you you yeah. If it's redesigned, you could say it's a different application. So that it probably could come back anyway. Matthew. You know, it's a small lot. And I know that we're talking about practical uh, considerations and views, but <clears throat> let's be real here. They, uh, if, if the applicant wants to withdraw the application and, and reconsider, I'm not sure where or how much sharpening of the pencil can be done here. I mean, <laughs> You know, if I was, if I had a lot of money, I, why not? I'm just, I, I, I think that um, someone's not gonna be happy if the application is approved and someone's not gonna be happy if it's denied. And if you, if you wanna have uh, the applicant to go away and reconsider the application and that's fine, I can, <clears throat> we spent this evening looking at it. I, I, I just don't see how, um, Home ownership rights uh, can be dictated to the extent that there's a suggestion here that the views of some, some neighbors can dictate the, the restrictions on the building possibilities of another landowner. There seems to be some compromise and obviously not enough. Um, <clears throat> it's a tight, tight lot, houses close together, 
there's not going to be a happy answer to this problem. Uh, yeah, that's my piece. Uh, Colin. Um, I'll pretty much have the same sentiment as Matthew. Um, I really feel like the applicant has done quite a bit of compromising in order to accommodate the neighbor's views. Particularly looking from nine smugglers cove to me, it appears that the, the roof line is going to be in line with the next house down. Um, so that it doesn't look like they're really exceeding that. Um, I, it's just something to consider again is, you know, I think they've made plenty of concessions and I really don't see a whole lot of wiggle room on this lot either. Um, but I was just continuing with my two cents and where I fall in. Michael. Yeah, I, I'm kind of evolving on this. You know, as I read, we, we look at this section constantly, um, but, but um, you know, it applies a little differently to, to, to every project. And, um, you know, we've got a set of criteria um, to evaluate this with, uh, one of which is, um, is impact on views, um, but there are there are several other criteria that, that we are to consider, um, and in my opinion, um, the the proposed location of the house um, is is actually best um, to meet all those other criteria, um, and and if. You know, let's remember we're we're talking about setbacks here, and so it, if if this were to become, um, I guess, more conforming, what would that mean? It, it would mean pushing the house back on the lot, right? So so towards the north, and really, what, what would what would that do um, to those views from nine smugglers and, and 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 views from other properties, frankly, certainly the one from 14 smugglers, which is next door, it would it would hurt those views. <laughs> so, you know, I think there's a there's an argument to be made, but by rebuilding it where it is and and doing what they're doing, uh, they they are meeting the setbacks um, to the greatest extent practical, given all those all those conditions and. Really, what we're what we're saying, if we if we are to, um, you know, vote this down, what we're saying is, no, you, you should build this, either either make it more conforming or or build it within the setbacks, but you know, build it completely conforming, and and clearly that's not what, in my, at least in my opinion, that's not what is best for this this parcel. Um, it's not that it's not best for this the owner of this parcel, and and I don't believe it's the best thing for the neighbors as well. So uh, I'm, I'm sort of, like I said, my opinion is evolving a little bit on this as we go through it and as I hear um, what, what other other thoughts are on it. I just, you know, Matt made the point, what, what it's a small lot, what are we asking them to do? I mean, it, it's, they've, they've already gone to great lengths um, to, to compromise quite a bit on this, so. Um, Anyways, those those are my those are my current thoughts <laughs> as of as of the this moment. Kevin. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I again, I mean, there's clearly been a ton of work that's gone into this, um, and and I think it really crystallizes it for us. I mean, I look at this and I think, okay, you know, we have the application, the specific application in front of us. We don't have a hypothetical if it was moved back to be conforming. A conforming structure could be built. That, it's a conforming structure. The lot's conforming. Great. We're strictly looking at it's a non-conforming structure and expansion, replacement, reconfiguration, what have you, of of that. And you know, maybe there is a better way to have have the setbacks be applied. But what we have in front of us, um, you know, the we're not leaving the homeowner without options here. I mean, this is here because they, they want to take what they have and expand that footprint. If this were a 
reconstruction of the exact same, um, you know, uh, footprint of the building. Um, that would still be here, but maybe you know, I might have a different view of that. If it were slight expansion, modernization, uh, you know, that would be one thing too. If it were a, a you know, demolition and reconstruction on an existing site, uh, Ben would be issuing a building permit and we wouldn't know about it. So I don't know that we're, I don't know that we're dictating anything here or there, whether we, well, obviously we, we approve it, we're approving a specific application, but um, if the application's withdrawn or we don't approve it, it's not that we're leaving a homeowner here without property rights. The property rights of a homeowner in a, in an area where uh, there's a view corridor or where there's significant vegetation or where the soil conditions aren't appropriate for a septic system have these impositions on them uh, regardless of where they are in this town. That is one of the uh, side benefits of home ownership. That is a, you know, those property rights, those are property obligations that come with that. So yes, it's a tight lot. Um, and it's a tight lot in a place that wasn't a, a you know, a mystery, um, you know, to anybody when the lot was drawn, when the home was built, when the home was acquired. So I don't, I don't see an imposition here that, that we'd be imposing, um, frankly, by any decision, whether it's, you know, uh, a vote down or, or, you know, I think what my preference is evolving to, which is, you know, I'd, I'd love to see a little more work on it um, before we vote either way. Joe. Sure. Um, I guess my position is evolving um, in line where, where Kevin is going. Um, I'm, I'm hesitant to talk about this, uh, I think, Matt, in terms of homeowner rights. I mean, we're dealing with two sets of homeowner rights, you know, both the applicant and the neighbor. And so it's kind of a circularity, I think, to say we'd be favoring one over the other, depending on, on the outcome of our vote. I, I mean, I would point out, you know, when we get these reconstructions in, these are non-conforming structures we're doing. We're talking with, in theory, I think the theory of, you know, land use planning is when you have a non-conforming structure, ideally it disappears over time. So when you come in applying to, you know, to do improve or relocate or expand a non-conforming structure, you're not, you're not coming in with a, with a clean slate. And in fact, the way that the ordinance is written, the first thing you're supposed to do is to keep within the the within the nonconformity, excuse me, within within the setback lines. Now, typically, that's not it doesn't happen. So we immediately flip to the exception, and this is the exception language, of course, that talks about you know whether this um, you know it meets the setback requirements to the greatest extent practical. But that is, like I say, is an exception to the general rule that you're really supposed when you come in for uh, uh, an expansion or a relocation of your not conforming ease, you're actually supposed to take that opportunity to get it back to legalize it. So I don't see that the, you know, the homeowner in this case, you know, has, you know, stronger property rights and maybe has a little bit lesser property rights than the, than the homeowner who's already, the neighboring homeowner who's already been app approved and uh, apparently met our requirements. So um, I think it's a very difficult problem, and I, like I say, I'm extremely sympathetic to the to the applicant here. But I just think the applicant just needs to try harder to get my vote. Uh, Chair, I would just comment that uh, the the applicant asked if he could comment again, and there's also a hand up in the attendee again. I know public comments over, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. All right. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I guess I'd be, I'd be comfortable for me hearing, uh, with hearing from both the applicant and the other attendee on the, I think the limited issue of, of uh, both ability to further reform the application, further mod modify the application, and, and whether that is really feasible, uh, and, um, and the view question. But I, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that, whether we should, whether we should reopen that to, to those uh, particular topics or not. 
I, I'd certainly be open. I, I think the, the more the more we hear, um, you know, the better in, in this format. And I, I, I believe we, you know, and maybe I should should use the royal we. I probably have posed some thoughts to the applicant that uh, I, I'd be okay with the response to. Okay, uh, Aaron. Yeah, another another uh, attendee uh, uh, just also raised her hand. Oh. How are you guys seeing this? <laughs> you get attendees on the right hand column instead of panelists to attendees. Okay, okay, good, good. I, as we all know, I need to upgrade my Zoom skills. That's a uh, three. judicially noticed fact. Um, all right, good. Well, okay. So seeing no objections then, um, uh, Kevin Brown, if you, if you had some comments on, on what I outlined there, that'd be great. Yeah, thank you for taking my comments. I've been sort of taking them all in as you guys have been talking through the view issues. And you, you know, it, we're trying to, again, we're trying to balance the three views. We, we have played around with like, what's the shortest that we could get this house to, to really still be able to have a second floor for the extra square footage. And, you know, if you want to reference the, the last view image that we have where we have the overlays, uh, the view from Nine Smugglers Cove, the lowest that we could feasibly you know, design this house and get a second floor was to the top of where that existing chimney is. So I guess my fear, and, and that really doesn't afford you any more of a view than, than what we have now. You, get a, you lose a little bit more sky, but essentially you're still right at the edge of the water line. So I, I guess my fear is, I don't know, without taking off the floor and losing, you know, pretty much having the similar square footage house that we have, um, going back to the drawing board to try to minimize that because that you know that's really what we're talking about is bringing the house down because going out it's going to block somebody else's view so it, again we're trying we're this we thought was the best solution and and i i fear that we're going to go through the trouble of redesigning this coming back and we're going to be at the same discussion is my fear and i i, don't, I just don't want to you know spin our wheels like that i guess is is part of the issue and you know, where, you know, one of the options we explored in the beginning was building this house, like, like Matt referred to earlier in the building envelope. And, but we were very sensitive to the immediate neighbor of uh, 14 Smugglers Cove, because yes, we could build a brand new house, 35 feet and we'll block his view, but nine smugglers view, nine smugglers might still have a view, but it might be blocked a little bit. Yeah, it would block more of his view then too. So that's kind of why we took this approach coming to, to the board and trying to build the house on the existing footprint. So just wanted to, whether that helps or hurts, I don't know, but. Okay, okay, great. Thank you, Kevin, appreciate that. And, and I was able to divine, uh, work through the, the Zoom program and see that we do have, I think, three other hands up. Um, and I just, I just remind, um, uh, the participants that we are, in fact, in the board consideration uh, part of this process. So we appreciate your your comments, but please do try to keep them brief and on point. And and Ben, I'll let you recognize uh, folks in order. Okay, this is Rebecca Sargent. Go ahead, Rebecca, if you can state your name and address. Um, so I'm Rebecca Sargent, and I work at Kevin Brown Architecture. So. Um, but I just wanted to point out, um, cause I think the height from the view from Nine Smugglers Cove, um, obviously impacts the right side of their current view. Um, if we did build a new building 35 feet in the building envelope, it would obscure all of to the left of the red line, basically. Um, possibly even from the, the shadowed house. Um, so they'd be losing more of their view than what we're proposing, in a sense, and that's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And uh, Marisa Tobias again. I. I I just want to express, you know, again, we bought this house, you know, way back in March of 2018. 
Um, and we've been really trying to, to work on, on something that will fit into the neighborhood and have as little impact as possible. We didn't want to, you know, we don't want to build that in the, in the envelope and totally cut off the whole tops view. I mean, we don't want to do that. Um, and, you know, we thought we were moving around along and now, you know, somebody buy something after us and does what they want and and makes their modifications and now you know we have to we have to adjust again and and it's just frustrating um for us um we will try to work you know with anybody um but you know i think that we've we've adjusted a lot um and and toned things down quite a bit um so i just want that acknowledged Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. And Susan Mitchell. Go ahead, Susan. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you uh, for hearing my comment tonight. And I appreciate how carefully you're studying this. Um, we live at um, 8 Smugglers Clo Cove Road, which is on the same side of the street next to 14. Smugglers Cove Road and next to the Tobias House. So we have a corridor um, that has been a view for everyone in their backyards. We've lived here for 42 years. And over that time, we've put on additions and we just finished putting on a, a big deck and our neighbors um, on the other side of us, um, number four, Smugglers Cove, they have done the same with their deck. And we've all um, respected each other's uh, views over this time period. And as I said, we've lived here for 42 years. So everyone um, has been very respectful and I do appreciate um, how the Tobiases have tried to um, also realize, you know, what neighborhood they're moving into and what people have been trying to do for each other over the years that we've all been living on the street. So I've, even though we, have, we didn't make a comment at the initial time, um, that was because um, we saw the design and the way that it was um, going to be set on the lot did not affect us. However, if that moves, that would block the Haltoffs, it would block our view, it would block the neighbor next to us, and the whole side of our street would um, be in a completely different um, position on this. So um, I think looking at the, the current plan um, that was why we didn't speak up at first. But as I said, we've been here a long time and so have um, the other, the three of us on the side of the street next to the Tobias's house and um, everyone's been very respectful of what they've done. So um, I'm hoping that, that something like that would, would not happen because it's not just the Haltoffs, it's everyone to the left of them. It's more than just one. Thank you, thank you, Susan. Appreciate the input. And you know, based upon the additional input that we've heard, which I agree has been helpful, I know I was, I was somewhat reluctant to reopen this thing. Uh, are, are there any other any, any any other hands raised, Ben? There's one more. Uh, oh, okay. It's uh, it's Mark Coggin who who spoke earlier from from Nine Smugglers Cove. All right. Maybe we can make this the last one. That sounds good. Mark, go, go ahead. Um, and, uh, you know, we heard you loud and clear the first time, but if you have anything to add, uh, feel free. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Ben. Yes, I mean, certainly I do not, and Jonna and I do not want to at all adversely affect the Hall Tops or the Mitchells. So, um, I mean, I appreciate what Kevin has said. We, we certainly would love the uh, the you know Kevin and team to reevaluate the height, but if Kevin feels that he has already evaluated that and is at the kind of the limits of where they can drop, then we certainly do not want the house to be shifted to the left and destroy the views of our our neighbor our other neighbors. So um, we we would kind of accept what uh, the the board decides in that regard. I would ask one consideration though, which was really not discussed, and that was the feedback from the Haltoffs about the deck. The the screened in porch does give it does affect their views and the Mitchells' views presumably significantly. And and the, whether that's a consideration that can be brought forth in the 
and the approval around not screening that porch in and leaving it as an open deck that again, that helps address the, the concern of our neighbors too. So thank you. Matthew, go ahead. Um, thank you, Chair. There's a question for Mr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown, could you, assuming that the chair gives you permission to speak in response to my question, um, would you be able to, to comment on changing the deck to a screened in from a screened in deck as currently envisioned in the application to an open air deck, such as what um, the homeowner at 14 Smugglers Cove has? I, I do understand that it's a little higher, so the railing would have to be really um, appropriate, but that's a code enforcement issue. Uh, but could you comment on that, assuming that the chair gives you permission to speak? Thank you. Go ahead, go ahead, please do. Thank you. Uh, I think this is really a question for the uh, Marissa and Keith. Um, you know, looking at, the, I'm looking at the visual on my other screen, but the ramp, we would still be required to have a railing, um, which would still be blocking, you know, some of that view essentially. So you'd still be looking through a railing, you know, right now on our image, it's kind of graphically shown, but we're going to need a code rail there. Uh, so the taking the screening out just pretty much opens up sky. Um, but again, I'd be happy to chat with Marissa and, and uh, Keith about that, about their thoughts on that. All right. Um, excellent. Well, uh, yes, Joe. I, I just had a question for, for Ben. Um, if the if the applicants chose to build, you know, completely within inside the um, um, the setbacks, would they have an absolute right to go to thirty five feet at yes. that point? Yes. Okay. Matthew, are we back in the executive session? Yeah, we're back in in uh, in board discussion. Yes. Uh, I just want to have a quick comment. Uh, Joe and I were talking earlier uh, about this application, about, probably about twenty minutes ago on this video feed, and he made a comment that it caught me off guard because he said it's in uh, the nonconformity, and I was thinking about the nonconformity. And so, this may be a question for Ben: Is the nonconformity the size of the lot? Well, the, the, the lot is non-conforming, but we're really dealing with the non-conforming structure here is the non-conformity we're dealing with. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a little circular for me. Can I, my understanding is that the, the lot size is small, right? And so then the, the setbacks are there and that the shaded area on one of the applicant slides was, shows the building envelope. Could you help me uh, point to the point that Joe is talking about, the, about the nonconformity. That was my question. I, well, the, the nonconformity is in relation to the side, the front and side setbacks. Is, that's the nonconformity we're dealing with. So, so the, the, the colored shading is not the, the appropriate building envelope then. So no. The side setback would be 25 feet. Right, so the the inner dotted yeah. line is is the building envelope that they could build to 35 feet in that small rectangle that extends toward the back of the lot. And then the blue, the blue shaded envelope yeah. reflects not becoming more non-conforming than right. they are now. So to address Joe's point, so let's assume that they, they destroy the building raise it to the ground and they decide to build within the inner circle inner lines of the, within the setbacks for this particular lot it'd be a shoebox looking house but they could do it and that could go up 35 feet yes right and so the only then and because they're the applicant is seeking to i guess a little small orientation and a little larger in one side and a little less in the other is the current footprint. That's the nonconformity. Yes. I'm with you. Okay, thank you. 
All right, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. And I, as, as I was saying earlier, you know, I think uh, Mr. Brown's um, further commentary was, was uh, helpful as, as was the uh, commentary from some of the other participants um, just in the, in the past few minutes. And I, I'm gonna uh, move to uh, approve the request of Kevin Brown Architecture representing Marissa and Keith Tobias, owners of the property at 16 Smugglers Cove Road, map U10, lot 41 to replace an enlarge a non-conforming single family dwelling on their property based on sections 19-4-3.b.2, b.3 and b.4 of the zoning ordinance. Um, I, I feel as though we've, we've adequately considered uh, all of the factors uh, under those sections of the ordinance. Uh, there's been some question about views. I think we've, uh, I think the, the, the testimony, the commentary from the participants and from the applicants has, has pretty readily established that uh, this is in fact the, the, the better uh, option as far as impact on views goes. Uh, and I'm, I'm satisfied that the uh, application meets the ordinance requirements. And I'm, I'm of course prepared to vote in favor of my own motion. Aaron, you're muted. Aaron, you're muted, bud. Can't hear you. I know. I, I, I do that all the time. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to second this motion. I, I did come into it looking at that view and thinking uh, that was going to control it. But I think we've had a really great discussion here and heard from a lot of people about it. And I, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to vote for it. So we've got the uh, motion. We've got the second uh, further discussion. Uh, we've, had, we've had a lot of discussion, but uh, discussion on the motion. Yes, Matt, Matthew. On the practical extent issue, do we want to require a condition that the deck has to be an open air deck? I I don't want to. Um, so it's submitted as is, that, and that's what we're voting on. Right, and, and you know, certainly per, pursuant to Robert Robert's rules, if if somebody wanted to uh, propose an amendment, then we would vote on that amendment. Um, I I just feel as though. Uh, I'm not. I'm not impressed by the the extent of of the impact on the view there, uh, and I, I feel as though if you know honestly, if if uh, the, the applicant wants to to screen in their their deck, they sh they should have the opportunity to do that because otherwise they could just push that that puppy all the way back and screen in the whole thing, screen in an even larger deck potentially. Aaron. Um, and just following on that, Ben, um, would it be the case that the applicant could actually put a solid wall that would be the correct height there instead of slats? Uh, on, on the deck? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, typically you, you, you need a 36 inch guard. Uh, so yes, it, it could, by, by code, it could be a solid wall. By code, it could be really impacting the view there. Right, and it, and it looks like they're showing like a, a pretty sleek cable rail to, to limit that as much as possible. Okay. And, and my experience with that is that that road runs both ways. And I've, I've dealt with uh, friends and clients who've worked on uh, establishing, you know, the proper rail system up to code. And the applicants aren't going to want that wall because they're going to want to look out and see as much as they can. And that, that obviously is, is uh, beneficial to the neighbors as well. They're not looking at a wall. They're able to also look through the cable system. Kevin. Um, just, you know, since we're, we're discussing uh, the motion here, it does seem like that the motion is likely to pass. I, I just want to explain in advance. I'm, I'm not going to vote for the motion. I'm going to vote against it. And, and mainly that that's not a um, reflection. I don't want anybody to think it's a reflection on the quality of the application, which, which was excellent, or really even the thought that went into how the house is being designed. I, I do think there are potentially, um, uh, you know, better ways. I'm, I'm not going to be upset that, that the motion passes. And I think that the, um, obviously the quality that, that Kevin and his team put into the design is going to be, I think, a credit to the town, but um, I just didn't want to put that out there. I, I, I will not be supporting um, this motion, but I'm not going to be upset when it passes. Any further comment? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please raise your hands. All right, we've got one, uh, we've got 
two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> six in favor. Uh, opposition. We got Kevin. Okay. And Carmen, did you get that? You got you got that. Yeah, just uh, for the record, it was uh, Joe Barbieri in favor, uh, Matthew Caton in favor, Colin Powers in favor, Michael Valancourt in favor, Aaron Mosier in favor, and Michael Tatamowilant in favor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the uh, the application does carry on to the uh, proposed findings of fact and proposed additional findings of fact. Um, I'll just buzz through these, and and the, there may be some some suggested revisions, which is of course fine. Uh, proposed finding of fact one: the property is a conforming lot in the RA zone. The property contains a non-conforming single-family dwelling. Proposed finding of fact two: the existing house does not meet the front or side setback requirements. The owners would like to reconstruct and expand the house. Proposed additional finding of fact one: the zoning board of appeals has considered the size of the lot, slope of the land potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on, on adjacent properties, location of the septic system, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the pro proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Proposed additional finding of fact four, the building reconstruction meets the setback the greatest practical extent based on the criteria in section 19-4-3.b.2, b.3, and b.4 in the zoning ordinance. Michael. Oh, and I see Ben has his hand up too. So Michael, go go ahead. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> I, I think we heard that this lot is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. Is that right, Ben? Yeah, that was my comment. Okay, and we're, so finding of fact number one um, should be just modified to say non-conforming. The other uh, thing I want to bring up, and it, and it hasn't come up yet, and I don't think it's, um, I, I don't know what relevance it may have. This lot is in the shoreland zone. Um, it's, clearly, it's clearly in compliance with the shoreline, shoreline setback. Uh, which is 75 feet. Um, so that's why I think we weren't reviewing it under that um, section. I, I, I don't think it, I don't think we need to make a finding to that effect. Um, but it, it, you know, I thought I'd throw it out there and see if, see what other, other people's thoughts are on that. Yeah, we don't, in, in my review of this, we don't have any nonconformity in relation to the shoreland zone, which, which is why it didn't come up, but I, valid point you make where where, it, where it, my sense is that we don't need to include that as a as a finding um i, I appreciate the the point mike uh yeah i'm fine with, i'm fine with not i i again i i don't know that it needs to be included either i don't think it, it's probably not relevant to to the application so uh Additional thoughts on the proposed findings and proposed additional findings. We don't yet have a motion to approve, but certainly. Uh, Kevin. Uh, I believe that on number two, uh, that last sentence, the owners would like to, I think we should add um, relocate to that as well, because I, I do think it constitutes a relocation. And Reconstruct, comma, relocate and expand. And, and I'm taking I'm taking Mike's uh, initial proposed uh, initial um, uh, change or suggestion on finding of fact one as a friendly amendment, and I think we can change we can take Kevin's as a friendly amendment as well, unless there are any objections to those. All right, anything else? All right, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the proposed findings of fact and proposed additional findings of fact, incorporating the friendly amendments to proposed finding of fact one and proposed finding of fact two as articulated by Michael and by Kevin. Colin, uh, so moves. Do we have a second? second. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll give Kevin the second. Uh, 
any converse, any further conversation? I think we've discussed this adequately, but anything further? All right, hearing nothing further, all in favor? All right, and I'll do the roll call because I think Ben's right, we should do that. Uh, Mike Valancourt in favor, Joe Barbieri in favor, Matthew Caton in favor, Michael Tadema Wheeland in favor, Colin Powers in favor, Aaron, I think you were in favor, and, and Kevin in favor, uh, so unanimous. Motion carries. Uh, the proposed findings, the findings of fact are approved. The additional findings of fact are approved. And um, uh, Kevin Brown, thank you for uh, for your work on this. Uh, I just want to join the, the other members of the board in complimenting you on putting together a really first rate application here. Uh, some difficult issues, but uh, but thank you for that. Made it everything exceedingly clear to, to understand. Uh, thank you to your clients as well, to the applicants and. Uh, to to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tobias and and good luck. <laughs> Thank you guys all for your help. It was great. Appreciate it. And then we we have just one uh, remaining item, which is a little bit of housekeeping. We had we put on the agenda if I can find it, um, which relates to uh, it was a uh, Matthew Caton uh, suggested recently that we have a little bit more formal of an introduction uh, to our. Um, to our meetings, which I think is a good idea. Uh, you know, we've always approached that on sort of an ad hoc basis. I try to hit some of the points that that that, are, that were listed in, in Matthew's uh, suggested um, narrative, uh, but I don't always get them all. And and uh, so I think it's helpful to have that script. And in fact, what I did when we kicked the meeting off uh, today, you probably noticed, is I effectively read from that script. I made a couple of modifications just based on the fact that we're doing this via Zoom, and so it's a little. A little bit confusing at times um, with with this medium, uh, but any any feedback on on that uh, thoughts? Again, I think it makes sense, but if if folks have uh, suggestions on what Matthew proposed or, or tweaks or anything like that, um, welcome to entertain those. But uh, uh, I think it I think it's a again a good idea. Matthew, yeah, you did a great job. Uh, I could not have said it better. Thank you. I, I'll just add. I, I I think it's a great idea. I think it it uh, it sort of gets everyone on the same page, and everyone, especially uh, you know people watching or people attending meetings in the future, it it just sort of gives them an idea of what to expect because not everyone not everyone attends these things as regularly as we do, thankfully. So right, right. So I'm I'm not seeing anybody uh, really objecting. I mean, if, you know, as we as we continue to work through this script, if folks have little tweaks or suggestions uh, on a going forward basis, feel free to share them. Um, but yeah, I, I to follow up on what Mike just said, you know, we do so many of these, you kind of forget that people don't don't know how this <laughs> how this process works, um, which is uh, completely understandable why why people would why this would be completely foreign to a lot of people. So. All right, good. Uh, anything else? Anything on the agenda for next month, Ben? No, I, we don't have anything cooking right now. So I hope everybody has a happy holiday and uh, see if something comes around for January. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, happy holidays, uh, happy new year, and uh, stay safe and healthy out there. Good, thanks. Have a good night, everybody. All right, okay, guys. Everybody. Uh, bye. Good night. Good night.